Hi guys, uh, let's learn the video for the for the optimum longitudinal forces distribution for different CGs, part four. Contents are quiz and for the optimal longitudinal force distribution for different CGs on a longitudinal axis. I will explain the force distribution curves, a real practice with Excel sheet, analysis of distribution curve, and derivation of equation for maximum forces. And finally, we have conclusion. Here is the quiz for you. Uh, which is the right statement? Uh, the right statement is only one among four. Number one. Tilting acceleration gets bigger as the CG is located closer to the real axle. Number two. Tilting deceleration gets bigger as CG is located closer to the front axle. Number three. Tilting acceleration gets smaller as CG is located closer to the rear axle. Number four. Tilting acceleration is not relevant to CG location. Which one is right? Did you get the answer? Here we have three sets of graphs uh, for the optimal longitudinal force distribution for three different CGs. Uh, let's call the normalized force as just a force for simplicity throughout this, uh, throughout this video. As I explained, at the tilting deceleration or tilting acceleration, corresponding tires lose their ground grips. Uh, this graph uh, shows, the, shows the three cases of CGs in one place, the ratio of L sub F to L sub R is 4 to 6 and 5 to 5 and 6 to 4. Uh, we can compare uh, these different CGs each other to know uh, what is the effect of CG location along the longitudinal axis of wheelbase. Uh, the curve uh, with a dot stand, stand for the CG location with the ratio of 4 to 6. Hollow dot stands for the ratio of 5 to 5. And finally, square dot stands for the ratio of 6 to 4. We know that if LF gets bigger than L sub R, the absolute value of tilting deceleration gets bigger. On the other hand, if L sub R gets bigger than L sub F, uh, the absolute value of tilting acceleration gets bigger. To make the three sets of the optimum longitudinal force distribution curve in the previous slide, all we need are geometry data related to CG location. No data required for the weight. Of course, we need the important two equations, B7 and B8, derived in the part 2 video. Uh, let's make the graph step by step. In the first step, put the data of wheelbase L, CG height H, L sub F, L sub R, and the program of equation B7 and B8 in the Excel sheet. In the second step, calculate the G unit uh, making equation B7 and B8 zero to find the limit of longitudinal motion for three cases of the ratio of L sub F to L sub R. The first data set is for the ratio of 4 to 6. Second data set is for the ratio of 5 to 5 and the third data set is for the ratio of 6 to 4. The first element of the set represents tilting acceleration. Second element of the set represents tilting deceleration. In the next step, set the interval of each datum of G unit, which is 
point 0.1 here. As you can see, 3.9, 3.8, 3.7, and so on. So, the decrement, the quantity of decrement is 0.1. And in the next step, uh, draw the uh, graph for the longitudinal front pulse, front wheel pulse, and the longitudinal rear wheel pulse for G unit. In the next step, repeat the same procedure for the other two cases here. And finally, show all the three graphs in one place. That's all. Let's look into the graph. The royal blue color is for front wheels and the orange color is for rear wheels. The table in the bottom shows the characteristic values of the graph. X-axis represents the G unit. Uh, this slope is the value at the tilting deceleration. F sub D C is the maximum braking force at the front wheel. Uh, and this slope is the value at the tilting acceleration. And FACC is the maximum acceleration force at the rear wheel. And we have maximum braking force at the rear wheel and the maximum acceleration force at the front wheel. Uh, the absolute value of the slopes and the maximum deceleration and acceleration forces are increasing uh, when the absolute values of corresponding tilting are increasing uh, for deceleration here, for acceleration here. As a result, a moving CG uh, from the neutral position, the ratio of 5 to 5 of the wheelbase is like two sides of a coin. The better the braking, the worse the acceleration, or vice versa. To calculate the maximum acceleration force of the uh, front wheel, uh, which is the value of the red box, in the case of L sub F to L sub R being equal to 4 to 6. Uh, let's start with the equation B7 we have obtained in the part 2 video. A maximum acceleration force at the front wheel happens at the G unit equal to half a ratio of L sub R to CG height H the value of which is 1.93 G unit in the case of L sub F to L sub R being equal to 4 to 6. If we have a doubt on this equation, uh, please uh, refer to uh, part 2 video for the proof. Uh, therefore, maximum force of the front wheel can be obtained by substituting the equation C1 for a G unit A to G of V3. Then we have the equation C2. In the case of L sub F to L sub R being equal to 4 to 6, of which force is 0 0.29 G unit at the acceleration of 1.93 G unit. We can calculate the other values in the similar way. For the calculation of a maximum braking force of a front wheel, which is the value of the red box in the case of L sub F to L sub R being equal to 4 to 6. Let's start with the with the equation B, B8 uh, we have obtained in the part 2 video. Uh, from the equation B8, uh, tilting deceleration 
at real wheel happens at the g unit equal to the ratio of minus l sub f to cg height h the value of which is minus 2.57 uh, for the case of l sub f to l sub r being equal to 4 to 6 uh, if you have a doubt on this equation uh, please refer to part 2 video uh, for the proof you cannot break your car uh, more than tilting deceleration of the rear wheels as we learned in the part 2 video therefore the front wheels have the maximum braking force at the tilting deceleration of rear wheels as a result maximum brake force of the front wheel can be obtained by substituting the equation C3 per the G unit A to G of equation uh, B7. Then we have the equation C4. In the case of L sub F to L sub R being equal to 4 to 6, of which value is minus 1.29 G unit. Minus sign stands for the braking. For the calculation of a maximum acceleration force of a rear wheel, uh, which is the value of the red box, in the case of L sub F to L sub R being equal to 4 to 6, uh, let's start with the equation V7. Uh, we have obtained in the part 2 video. Uh, from the equation V7, Tilting acceleration at the front wheel happens at the uh, G unit equal to L sub R to CG height H, the value of which is 3.86 here. Uh, for the case of L sub F to L sub R uh, being equal to 4 to 6, if we have a doubt on this equation, please refer to part 2 video for the proof. Uh, you cannot make your car accelerate uh, more than tilting acceleration of the front wheel, as we learned in the part 2 video. Therefore, the rear wheels have the maximum acceleration force at the tilting acceleration of the front wheels. As a result, maximum acceleration force of the rear wheels can be obtained by substituting equation C5 for the G unit A to G of equation B8. Then we can get the equation C6. In the case of L sub F to L sub R being equal to 4 to 6, of which value is 1.2. 9.3 G unit plus sign stands for the acceleration. To calculate the uh, maximum braking force at the rear wheel, which is the value of the uh, red box in the case of L sub F to L sub R being equal to 4 to 6. Uh, let's start with the equation B8 we have obtained in the part 2 video. A maximum force at the rear wheel in the braking happens at the G unit equal to half a ratio of minus L sub R to C G height H. Here, yeah. uh, the value of which is minus 1.29 G unit. In the case of L sub F to L sub R being equal to 4 to 6, if we have a doubt on this equation, uh, please uh, refer to the part 2 video uh, for the proof. Uh, therefore, maximum force of rear wheel can be obtained by substituting equation C7 uh, per the G unit A to G of the equation B8. Uh, then we have the equation C8. In the case of L sub F to L sub R being equal to 4 to 6, of which value is minus 0.13 G 
the unit. At the acceleration of minus 1.29 the unit, we can calculate the other values in the similar way for these values. Uh, let's find the answer to the quiz. And the first one, uh, tilting acceleration uh, gets bigger as CG is located closer to the front axle, not the rear axle. The second one, tilting deceleration gets bigger as the CG height are located closer to the rear axle, not the front axle. Number three, tilting acceleration gets smaller as the CG is located closer to the rear axle. Right, this is the answer. And number four, tilting acceleration is directly relevant to the CG location. Therefore, the answer is number three. Did you hit the answer? Here we have the conclusion. Uh, the absolute value of the slopes and uh, the maximum deceleration and acceleration forces are increasing uh, when the absolute uh, values of the corresponding tilting is increasing. The longitudinally moving CG uh, from the neutral position 5 to 5 of a wheelbase is like two sides of coin. The better the braking, the worse the acceleration, or vice versa. You can easily understand this video if you watch my previous video. Recently, I explained the EVD and the optimum longitudinal force distribution, including EVD logic. Uh, that is the part one video of the optimum longitudinal force distribution. And I explain the optimum acceleration and the braking force distribution curves and their mechanical properties. And also, I explained in detail how to make the graph using Excel sheet. And also, I explained the importance of lowering CG height with a practical example in part three. A lowering CG height is the only way to improve both of acceleration and the braking performances. Next video will be uh, the optimum longitudinal force distribution part 5, including uh, front and rear force shown in one graph. Practical example with Excel and distribution curves for different longitudinal location of CG. Then see you in the next video. Goodbye, guys.